In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can record an electric guitar straight into the computer. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a guitar lead straight out of our guitar and plug this directly into the audio interface. You could do this with any audio interface that has a jack input. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to plug it into input one. And when we open up GarageBand, you're going to see this kind of screen. And I'm going to recommend we start on an em empty project for now. What we then get is a screen that looks like this, where we can choose what type of track we want to make. We're recording guitar, so here we go. Let's record some guitar. Importantly, I've also selected input one. So that is the input that this lead is plugged into. I've also selected uh, from here that I'm using my focus right, the Scarlett 18i8. Because we're plugging direct in, I don't have an amplifier unless I hear it from GarageBand itself. So I do want to hear my instrument as I play and record. I want to hear it. And then we're going to create that track. And this is the screen that we get. This is GarageBand, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Just wanted to let you know that this video is part of a full course teaching the principles of home recording, covering how to make music with GarageBand, how to create your own drum beats, use virtual instruments, and create a full song from scratch. <laughs> and we've dropped a drum kit down the stairs, but importantly, we can create our own drum parts. We're going to add a fill, so let's have a think what could happen here. Doom, doo doo doom. Dun, 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 dun. It's available as part of the Andy Guitar Premium Membership. The link is at the top of the description. Let's get back to the video. A little bit of housekeeping. First things first, I'm going to click File, Save As. Because the worst thing in the world when we're doing recordings is to lose a piece of work. It's the worst. This part of the screen should look really familiar to you. We have stop, play, record, loop, forward, fast forward, rewind. Um, you can change what's displayed here by clicking here. Beats and project is normally fine. You even have a tuner on here, which is actually pretty good. Counting and metronome are optional. You can turn them on or off. Uh, this is the main volume. Don't touch that. We're going to keep that as is and adjust volume elsewhere. We have one track because I created a guitar track, but I can add multiple ones here. We These all go across in the timeline. Time goes across. If I, if I press play, nothing will happen. But that's the progression of time. And then we have all the tracks down here. Here is where we can actually not only choose from loads of sexy, really cool guitar amps, uh, we can choose from bass amps. And depending on the type of track, we've got a lot of other options here also. With these, you'll always end up finding your favourite. I really like Heartbroken because it's a little bit like Led Zeppelin. It's really cool. And also, uh, we can we have the controls to that amplifier here. And um, because I've clicked that I do want to hear, when that's orange, we do want to hear the guitar. We should, all being well, actually hear some guitar. How cool is that? That is just plugged straight in. I haven't adjusted anything. I could make those adjustments at the bottom here, uh, which are very good, but they are only showing you part of what we can do. For the detailed view, this one is for your amplifier itself when we're looking at these digital amplifiers. And we can choose from loads of guitars here, here. This is the full bank of everything. So there you go. Everything's just changed. There's another one. Everything's just changed. We can choose the head or the cabinet individually there. We can choose what microphone we would use. Ribbon mics in this case sound great. And these are they're realistic to the qualities of those amplifier uh, of those microphones. They're not 100% to what it would sound like here. It is just GarageBand, but they're brilliant as a starting point. And we can also adjust the mic placement of that microphone on the amplifier. If you want more than one microphone, you have to create another guitar track to be able to do that. But you can do that. I did a separate video on like GarageBand guitars versus real guitars, comparing valve amps and that kind of thing. Uh, check out that video. I'm sure I'll link to it below. I'll put the whole thing below. Um, but 
mostly, as I say, you're going to find your favorite, which for me, Heartbroken is pretty good. And then we're going to tweak here. We also have a lot of guitar pedals here. Uh, this has a couple already there, but we can drag and drop absolutely any of these in. Let's go mad. And then I think, yeah, we just drag them back if we don't want them. Uh, treble boosters sound really cool with old plexi style amplifiers. Um, yes, that's kind of how I like it. Tune up before you record anything. And also between every take. Because every time you do a great take and you haven't checked your tuning, you're probably going to be out of tune and it's going to be really annoying. Let's just record something. Let's see what it's like. Press record. There we are. And if we, this one is rewind, but back to the start, press play. Hopefully you can hear that. If you can't, you might be able to hear from my microphone. <laughs> I'm skeptical whether all of this is recording properly, but we shall see at the end. Um, that is simple recording. However, that's really limiting because what I didn't do is play along to anything. So uh, one thing that I could do is then create another track. And this can be a great starting point. Another track with duplicate settings. That's all I did there. So I'm going to play a lead line now. Uh, let's go for, where's that? Uh, yeah, vintage drive, that'll do, I think. So now. <laughs> Got a bit more sustain. So we've got like rhythm and lead, and we can even change these to say, you know, rhythm, lead. If you want to just record over and practice your improvisation, there you go, Bob's your uncle. Press record on this track. There you go. And we can listen back to that and we can do multiple takes of that if we want. Volume. Very handy. Um, all right, while we're on the subject of volume, let me put these back to zero dB. And let's have a little talk about uh, recording and gain and stuff like that. The thing that we've got the capability with with any audio interface, which mine's down here, that's why I was point pointing there, is that we've got control over the gain, which is the input signal. This is the waveform here. These things that are drawn on here, that's the actual sound. Let's zoom in on them. Let's have a look. There it is. Even the little chug, even just that bit, that is recorded there and it is, is evident. Um, these are at a decent volume. You can see how the leads are a little bit quieter because we have just one, we're playing one note rather than a whole chord, rather than more strings. And this is also why we typically need some kind of boost or overdrive or extra signal, a, a boost, going into our lead lines because they're naturally quieter because we're playing fewer notes. And we can see that on the screen here. We can do that in the software, but that's that's absolutely fine. But you need to be aware of that. I've adjusted this to make sure it's at the right volume on the audio interface itself. If it's too low, let me uh, mute that one. This one's mute. This is solo. This is to monitoring. It's to be able to hear your instrument. Click on that track. We'll record something. We can't even, I've turned that so low, you can't even see it on the recording, though it is there, because when we hear it back, the guitar processing that we've got on it is boosting the signal so we can hear it. But we don't want that. We want it somewhere better. We want it, I believe I had it about there. So we want this 
hitting the yellows just. What we don't want is that to all be red. That's gone red on my focus right, okay? We didn't want that, but it didn't really get noticeably louder because the guitar processing, the amplifier, virtual amplifier, is squashing that signal and making it about the same volume. But it will sound a better quality recording when we have that uh, input gain as close to zero dB as possible, but never over it, which means we want to be at about minus six, minus 10 as like, an average point and if it ever hits zero that is bad when it hits zero these spikes will go over the edge here it will look like a big block and unless it we've got a limiter or something protecting it from clipping it will distort it will sound bad it won't be a good distortion so when we record let me check where i'm at now <laughs> Get away with a little bit more, I think. What we can also do at this point is we can drop in a backing track and play over it, which would be a great thing. Here's one from my rock rhythm guitar course, and I'm just gonna drag on. We're gonna move it to the start, like that. And then without adjusting anything, I can press play. and I've got a jam track I can play onto. I can play the rhythm part. And then record that over this in time, and then even record a lead part over it. So let's, let's just do it. One, two, three, four. Now, we can play this back. Sounding pretty good. It's a little bit loud, so I'm just gonna take it down here. Rather than turn the drums up, I'm gonna turn the guitars down because I don't want the whole signal to clip. One thing that we can do, at this point here, we have track and master. Uh, we can put a limiter on it at the top, which will boost the signal. We we'll kind of squash it down to stop it from clipping. That's too much for this particular one. But a, a little bit, I think, I think we'll do this good. If I do all of this to a click, what I can do is take this there and there, and then we can loop it because the jam track I played along to is at 120 beats per minute, 120 BPM. So what that allows me to do is when it gets to the end of the section I recorded, it keeps going and I can do that for as long as, I can't remember how many that will actually go for. There, that's the other section. So I didn't have to record for the first one and a half minutes. I had to record 20 seconds of it and then just loop it. If you do it at the bottom half, it loops it. If you do it at the top half on other things, it can extend it, which is a, a, something we'll look at later in this course. What we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna record lead and I think that's gonna be the end of this particular video. That'll do. Not my greatest solo, but you know, it's just, that's the sort of thing I would like you to be able to do if you're into this kind of thing. Um, and then we've got it there to listen back to. Oh my God, listening back to my lead solo. Oh my God, first take. <laughs> 
So if you're at this point, there's a couple of things that I want to point out just to finish. What we can do is zoom in here. If you want to use recording to improve your playing, here we can see the waveform of the drums in the backing track and the waveform of when I play the notes in the lead part and even compare that at certain points to here, to the rhythm part as well. And you can see that actually I'm a little bit early on the lead part and the rhythm parts are also a bit early as well. Now you can of course grab them and move them more in time but that will knock all the others out as well and the others might not have been that bad so we don't want to do that so let me undo that straight away. But what we also have is an area of leeway. Really what we're looking for is for it to be in around that region. Uh, you can see that these waveforms are quite wide because the biggest thing that's causing that is the kick drum of uh, the or that's on the re recording of the audio track. Low notes, big waveforms, low frequency, low amount of downs and ups in a in an audio wave. High frequency, more transients in a shorter space, which means it will be higher frequencies or like guitars and stuff. So you can actually see that and we want those to be in this area here, which is what is known as the pocket, if you covered jazz or rhythm stuff. And it's just that area where it, it will sound in, near enough in time. If everything sounds absolutely bang on, um, often it sounds actually quite artificial. So having it just a little bit off within a, a range is totally fine. I forget what the range is, but we are talking 30 or 40 milliseconds and any wider than that it will start to sound bad. But that's how we can get started recording with electric guitar in GarageBand. I'm going to do the same process now but with acoustic guitar. We're going to be taking this a lot further in this course and building a full track together but this I'm aware is what a lot of people are going to be doing so you might have to watch this video a few times. You might have just watched this as inspiration. Um, have a go because once you start doing it, it's a lot of fun, no matter what genre of music you're really into.